Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery, and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite romance for 2020 so far. So, I've seen a lot of my favorite romance booktubers make a video like this where they talk about their favorite romances of the year so far, like halfway through the year, and I've never done that before, and so I thought it would be a very fun video to do. So I decided to talk about all of the romance books that I gave five stars to so far in 2020. There are 11, and I have like so many romance books that I loved this year so far, but these are the only ones that I've given five stars to. There are many four stars or 4.5 stars that I love, but these are the only ones that I've given five stars too. I'm not going to be actually holding up any physical books for this video because I am moving back to my college town very soon and I have already packed up all the books that I'm taking so I don't really want to unpack my books for the sake of this video. So you have to deal with pictures which is totally fine with me just adds more editing to the process. <laughs> so first off we're going to talk about of course my favorite read of 2020 so far we have Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I'm currently reading the second book and I'm only one chapter in but I'm really liking it. This is a book all about Chloe who has fibromyalgia and she's lived her whole life kind of sheltered by her family and then in the first page or second page of the book she has a near-death experience with a car. She realizes she needs to get a life so she decides to make a list, a get a life list. This is a list of things that she needs to do with her life and things that she's been sheltered from. She decides to move out of her parents' house and actually rent an apartment. And there she meets like the superintendent handyman of the building and named Redford. They have like a hate to love romance. He may or may not help her complete this list. I love Redford. I love Chloe. This book is hilarious. So, so, so funny. I love it so very much. The banter is top notch. I love how much I related to Chloe with her chronic illness. I have a chronic illness and I connected to Chloe oh so very much. I do not have her chronic illness but mine has similar aspects and I just connected to her so much and all of the talk about chronic illness in this book was so on point and so valid. So I love this book. Fair book of the year so far. Next we have A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. I have this book in a reading vlog of mine where I read books recommended to me by some of my best friends here on booktube. This one was recommended to me by my lovely friend Ashley from Ash Art Books. She even got me this book last year for my birthday. So Ashley ended up picking this one for me to read for that video and I ended up loving it. So this is a fantasy romance book all about a main character named Kat who's on the run from someone. She's hiding from this person and is pretending to be a soothsayer in a circus to basically hide her powers. She is something called a kingmaker which only exists I believe one every, once every 200 years. The love interest our hero is Griffin and he just ended up conquering the land and making his sister the queen of the land. So he is looking for something to keep his sister on the throne and protect her. So he stumbles upon Kat and realizes who she is and kidnaps her. So <laughs> it's like a traveling kidnapping road trip hate to love romance with great banter great fantasy stuff there's dragons there's magic there's so many steamy times it's so good i can't wait to continue on with the series i loved the first one so much if you love fantasy if you love romance put them together an amazing book next we have a book that i don't think i've talked about yet on my channel because i read it in july and i don't think my july wrap-up is up yet this one is called forever right now by Emma Scott. I listened to this off of Audible Escape. This one deals with a lot of trigger warnings and kind of deep and touchy subject matter. I mean, character Darlene ended up having a drug problem a couple years ago. I believe she went to jail. She is finally clean and finally staying sober and has put that horrible past in her life behind her and doesn't never wants to revisit it ever. So she ends up moving to San Francisco to hopefully start up her dancing career. And the new building that she moves into, the neighbor who lives below her, his name is Sawyer, and he is in college to become a lawyer, and he is a single father. His daughter, Olivia, is so, so cute. I believe she's only a couple of months old, maybe nine months old, and her mother ended up just leaving Olivia on his doorstep when he was in college, and he has turned his life around. He used to be a frat boy, party boy, and now all he does is 
look after, love on, and take care of Olivia. Darlene and Sawyer end up meeting and he's kind of like rude to her because he doesn't want any kind of relationship because he doesn't want to confuse Olivia and so he leaves all women like at a distance but he can't help but like become so intrigued by Darlene and it is so good and Darlene is just always so sweet and she tries to convince him that not all people who have done horrible things in their past are horrible people. She messed up in her past but that doesn't mean that she's a messed up person now and that people can change and mistakes are made and we can always grow from those mistakes. There are even deeper topics in this book but <laughs> Those are spoilers. I absolutely like adore this book. I had no idea that I would. M. Scott is just an amazing author. I love her books so very much. So I really recommend this one. And have you looked at this cover? Like, so good. Next we have another book that I ended up reading in July that is another romance favorite of mine. We have The Silent Waters by Brittany C. Cherry, the third book in the Elements series. This is my favorite book, I think, in the entire Elements series. The fourth book is really, really, really good. Gave five stars too. I think this one's my favorite. This book takes place in three different time periods. The first section is when our main character woman, Maggie Mae, is I believe like six to 10. And then it jumps to when I believe she's 18. And then it jumps to when she's maybe like 26, 25. Um, so there's three different sections in this book. The book starts out with Maggie Mae and her father moving in to his girlfriend's or new wife's house and she ends up having her own two children from a previous marriage. Her new mother's son has a best friend named Brooks and from the first moment they meet, Maggie Mae has a huge crush on him and wants them to get married. <laughs> so it's really, really sweet like that. But then one day when um, she wants to go have her wedding in the woods, she ends up stumbling across something she should not have witnessed. And from that day on, she does not speak. She does not say, a word. This book is basically about family and how much a family can struggle through something this traumatic. Maggie May trying to deal with her own personal life and her inner workings and what she believes in and what she wants to do with her life and then it also deals with her and Brooks's relationship throughout the years and how they have a beautiful like friends to lovers and he's a huge protector and like he just, he loves her so much. It is beautiful. I loved it so much. I really want to get a physical copy and just like tab it up to my heart's content. I'm, I'm like so excited for other people to read this one because I feel like not a lot of people have read this one in this series. It's so good. Next, we have Beach Read by Emily Henry. I read this for the Lovely Ladies live show book club with Ashley and Jen. I will leave our live show linked down below where we talked about this book for I think like an hour and a half or two hours. Loved it very much. We all gave it five stars. So this is a romance book between two writers. Our heroine is a romance writer and our hero is a literary fiction writer. She always has happy endings to her stories and he always has tragic endings to his story. They end up actually living in beach houses next to each other for the summer. They both task each other with writing the other person's genre because they're both in writer's block and can't really write. But this book deals with way more than just that. January is dealing with the death of her father and trying to cope with and trying to understand a bunch of the things that he did that weren't okay when he was alive and she didn't know that they happened. So a bunch of things that her dad did resurfaced after he passed away. And she's trying to deal with all the things that she finds out. And it is so good. Emily Henry just interwove like the funny romance parts with the serious romance parts like so great. It had serious moments and it had funny as heck moments and it was really 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 great. It's the first book I've ever read that has actually done that successfully. Had a rom-com but also like very serious aspects woven into a story together. I think her writing style is amazing. I loved this very much. <laughs> Next I have That Kind of Guy by Talia Hibbert. This is the third book in the Ravenwood series. This book is about Ray and Zach. This is an age gap romance where the woman is older. Our main character hero is demisexual so that's the first time I've ever seen that representation in a romance book before which was really cool. The beginning of it is him coming to terms and understanding what his sexuality like means to him so that was pretty interesting to read about. And our heroine actually has my chronic illness, which 
I had no idea going into the book. I just wanted to read more Talia Hibbert books because I love Talia Hibbert. She has my chronic illness. I just about screamed and cried when I figured that out. I had to rewind it so many times while listening to the audiobook because this is on Audible Escape if you want to check it out. Ray is a writer and she wants to go to this writing convention but her ex-husband is going to be there. She kind of wants to like show him up so Zach like proposes the idea of him being her fake boyfriend while they are there and it's a friends to lovers romance and it is so good. The chronic illness part of it was pretty great. I do wish there was more about it. What was talked about was completely accurate. All the stuff about my chronic illness in here was completely accurate, 100% accurate, great representation. But I feel like there could have been more, if that makes sense, like more um, details and like just what, just like more about it. There's just more to it than just what was on the page. But what was on the page was correct. I really enjoyed this one. Had so much fun. If you want to read a book that has chronic illness in it, please check this one out. You get a little glimpse into what I have to deal with in my daily life. <laughs> Next, I have A Worthy Opponent by Katie Robert, book number three in the Wicked Villains series. Oh, this one is so good. This is a series where Katie Robert has been writing reimaginings of Disney tales where the heroine or hero get with the villain of a story. So this one is about Tinkerbell and Hook, but this has a BDSM steamy aspects to it, so be where. I think both of them are also bisexual, so there's that representation in it. And this one is actually a marriage of convenience. Tinkerbell is on the run from Peter Pan and Hook decides to offer the prospect of a marriage to protect her. It develops into an actual love match. <laughs> it is so steamy. It's so good. I love it. Also very much my favorite in the series so far and I can't wait to continue and I can't wait for the next books in the series to be released. Next I have A Notorious Bow by Joanna Shu. This is book number three in the 400 series. You don't need to read them in order. I read this one by itself and I don't think any of the past couples or characters pop up in it at all. So this book is about Lady Christina and her and her mother and father just moved to America from England because her parents really want to find her a husband so that they can get the money from the husband to pay off debts that they have in England. So they're not really there to uh, find happiness for Christina. They just want money. They're kind of horrible parents. You'll figure it out when you read it. They're horrible people. And while they're in America, they're staying at Christina's cousin's estate or her aunt's estate. And right next door to her aunt's estate is Oliver's estate. And Oliver has some beautiful gardens that she loves to escape to. It's never explicitly stated, but I believe she has social anxiety. That wasn't like a term or a thing back then, but you could obviously tell that she has social anxiety. When she's feeling very anxious about talking to people and being in public and everything, she goes and just like finds peace in Oliver's gardens. But one day Oliver stumbles upon her and is like, what are you doing in my gardens? Now Oliver is actually maybe a duke, I don't remember. Um, and he's actually also deaf. So Oliver has been judged in the past because of him being deaf. And so he is very distant to people in general. He doesn't want to form any kind of relationship with anybody. So he keeps to himself. But Christina can't help but like want to get to know him and find a friend in him. And he doesn't want a friendship, but that happens anyway. It turns out to be also a marriage of convenience between the two of them. And you have to read the book to figure out how that happened. But it is so good. I loved it so much. One of my favorite historical romance books of all time. I loved it also very much. I really recommend this one. Next we have Pucked Off by Helena Hunting. This is book number five in the Pucked series. It is so good. This book is about Lance Romero who is a hockey player and Poppy who is I believe a massage therapist. Back when Lance was a kid he was abused so um, he has blocked out his childhood like all of his childhood and he doesn't remember anything. But Poppy actually knows Lance from when they were kids because he was her first kiss. So uh, Lance doesn't remember that at all. Lance goes into the place that she works to get a massage uh, because I believe he had like a fight or something on the rink. He thinks he's meeting Poppy for the first time and is totally like entranced by her but little does he know that they actually knew each other as kids and uh, he has no idea. I loved Poppy and her relationship with Lance was amazing. I love this one very much. My favorite one in the Pucked series. I still need to read book number six, but I love this one very much. Next we have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This one is so good also. So this book is about Brie who decides to move to this very small town. In this small town there's kind of like the town outcast. His name is Archer and Brie actually decides to go and befriend him because it looks like he doesn't have any friends and she wants to go be his friend. He's actually mute. He was in a car accident when he was a kid to where his vocal cords were like 
cut or severed, I don't know the terminology for it, but he's not able to speak anymore. So he's been very sheltered and outcast from the town. It's their friends to lovers romance and like Archer finally finding someone to confide in and like talk to and be friends with and it is so sweet and cute and beautiful. The last book on this list that I have to talk about today is Heidi's Guide to Four Letter Words by Tara Civic and Andy Arndt. This one is the funniest romance book I've ever read in my entire life. I love it so much. When I tell you it is funny, I was cackling in the car driving. Like, I never do that with audiobooks. Like, I'd be like, huh, oh, that was funny. But no, I was literally laughing out loud. Like, it is so funny. This book is about Heidi. And she is a kindergarten teacher, if I'm not mistaken. And I believe she just got laid off. She really needs a job, so she doesn't know that the job that she applied for and got is actually like a job in a dirty audiobook company. <laughs> she thinks it's so taboo and is like very shocked by what these people are reading and how they can actually like listen and read steamy things. And so uh, one night she is drunk in her house, just drinking alone, and she ends up like starting up a podcast while she's drunk trying to get used to reading dirty books. So she reads dirty passages from books. <laughs> It's so funny. And through this experience, she wants to gain enough confidence to go ask out her next door neighbor who she has like had a huge crush on for so long and she really wants to get the nerve to go ask him out. So she's hoping that through this experience of her reading steamy stuff, she can go ask him out and get enough courage to go and do it. And it is so good. It is so funny. I love this book so much. I'm due for a reread soon. It's just such a good book to put like a huge smile on your face. But anyways, there you have it. Those are 11 of my favorite romance books so far in 2020. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye! <laughs>